We must first understand the current theory of gravity and its problems before we go further towards other theories, so let's take one minute to do just that. The most widely accepted theory of gravity right now is Einstein's general theory of relativity. Although the mathematics in this theory are founded upon very complicated equations involving tensors, ultimately the actual mechanism and physics of how gravity is formed is just that mass, somehow through unexplainable means, using no energy or momentum, interacts with interwoven space and time, curving it around mass. Space and time is just simply standard three-dimensional space with a fourth dimension being change in that space or time. The problems with this view of gravity are numerous. As per calculations, the majority of mass in the galaxy must be undetectable dark matter or else the galaxies would not be able to hold together as they do at the measured speeds of rotation around their galactic core. Also, there must be another undetectable force named dark energy, which is facilitating the measured expansion of the galaxies moving away from each other equally in all directions. Something is impossible in all current theories of gravity. Also, closer to home, the prehelion precession, which is basically just a slight shifting of planetary orbits over time, cannot be completely explained with Einstein's equations of general relativity. Although the math of general relativity greatly increased the calculated accuracy of these events, another undiscovered planet expected to be roughly the size of Jupiter must be orbiting our Sun to account for the remaining inconsistencies. Yet Einstein's general theory of relativity is proven correct in many other ways time and time again, or has it? We'll get back to that in one minute. Right now let's go over this new theory of dynamic gravity and see if it can explain gravity better. First though, we have to understand that magnetic fields are facilitated by virtual photons, and magnetic fields can interact with each other. Forcing two similar poles of the magnet together will cause the field to repel each other creating force, and when two equally sized magnets are combined so that the opposite poles combine, the end result is not a magnetic field twice the strength only larger by the size of the magnet but rather a field that, while stronger, has also been displaced out slightly further and larger than it was previously. So what do magnets have to do with gravity? Maybe a lot more than you think. The electromagnetic force is a fundamental force that binds a proton and electron together, and it also creates magnetic fields when large clusters of atoms located in specific areas of the periodic table have a charge from electrons in the valence electron shell. But let's forget about magnetic fields since a magnetic field is clearly not gravity. But a new force that would act as gravity does, and we will hereafter call gravity, is created when atoms of molecules are forced tightly together, encroaching their separate electromagnetic force fields, which are facilitated by virtual photons. The fields are displaced in similar fashion to encroaching magnetic fields, particularly under the immense pressure and heat found at the core of celestial bodies. Once a critical limit is reached, the effect would grow exponentially, which would allow the electromagnetic force to reach vast distances and remain exceptionally strong. And this displaced force would pull and attract all electrons, particularly the ones found in the outer orbital shells and atoms. Almost all physical matter contains electrons, hence almost all matter would be drawn to the source of this displaced field, exerting force pulling the electrons but not enough to break them away from their orbital positions and away from their parent protons. Two separate electromagnetic forces will be exerted on the electrons simultaneously. The end result will be a net force exerted on the entire atom as a whole towards the source of the external electromagnetic field. And of course, putting electrons into seemingly chaotic orbital paths contributing to the mystery of the electron cloud. However, there is at least one known particle of matter that does not contain an electron, the unpaired proton. The sole particle that is so unstable that its weight must still be deduced from the measured weight of hydrogen. According to the dynamic theory of gravity, this particle would not fall in the gravitational field and would hence be quite unstable in the gravitational field, eventually making its way free of the planet into space as hydrogen and helium eventually do. But there is more to this theory than a simple attractive force. As the name dynamic gravity implies, there are opposing forces. Not only is there the attractive nature of this force pulling towards it all negative entities and the electromagnetic force, the electrons, but because the cores of celestial bodies are generating enormous gravitational fields associated with the positive force, the electromagnetic force, from the protons, 
it would then be expected that celestial bodies would not only pull themselves together, they would also repel, ensuring that celestial bodies would never, under normal circumstances, collide once they had reached a certain size. Smaller celestial bodies like Mercury would be generating smaller positive repulsive fields against a larger one like the Sun's field, and hence they would eventually stabilize closer to the Sun. And larger planets like the Jovian planets such as Jupiter will generate larger fields that will ensure their distance will be stable further away from the Sun. Although the planetary arrangement is not perfectly in this accordance, the general trend does follow that smaller planets orbit the Sun closer going to larger ones orbiting further away. In some places, such as the moons of Saturn, this capacious sorting effect from smallest to largest is almost perfect. But the timeline that would govern these events would be very long. Small fluctuations and orbiting distances could easily last hundreds of thousands of years. And the age of the solar system might never be old enough to have a perfect caspaceous sorting effect before the sun dies, especially with the orbiting celestial bodies dynamically interacting with each other. This could also give rise to the reason why stars tend to be about five light years apart in our galaxy. This could simply be the result of typical stars gravitational fields finding stability among the stars. This repulsive field could under certain circumstances like galactic black hole cores could completely attribute to the force currently known as dark energy. According to basics and field theory relating to this dynamic gravity theory, gravity would not be an infinite reaching force. Our planet would feel no gravitational force from another planet in another galaxy. However, if the celestial body were under enough pressure and heat, such as a galactic core and a black hole, it would be expected that nearby galaxies could interact with each other in a limited fashion. Another thing to consider in this theory states that gravity is an omnidirectional field similar to a magnetic field, and any mass in a gravitational field of a celestial body would feel drag forces from the field as it travels through it. This effect would grow as the velocity of the mass grows, as objects approach the speed of light reaching the speeds of the virtual photons generating the gravitational fields, objects would require more energy just as Einstein's famous equation predicts. I do dispute one component in this formula, however. The definition of mass that Einstein uses is the standard mass equals volume times the density stating that all mass would be equally affected by the cosmic speed limit of light speed. There are three definitions of mass, however, and I contend the appropriate one is mass equals weight divided by gravitational acceleration. Since it is gravitational drag forces that slow high-velocity objects according to dynamic gravity, if you were to be free of all gravitational acceleration, then there is now nothing stopping you from exceeding the speed of light. This is shown in the equation itself as when the gravitational acceleration is zero, you would have a zero denominator, which is an illegal function, hence the equation is no longer valid. However, this would do little good for any application currently as we are stuck in the Earth's and Sun's gravitational fields with no way to shield gravity. However, should the day ever come when our science is capable of interstellar travel, this exploit could allow faster than light speed travel under certain criteria. Now that we have a basic understanding of this dynamic gravity theory, let's return to scientific validation of Einstein's theory of general relativity and dig into what's really going on here. One of the more popular tests of general relativity is the expected measure of time dilation with equations that Einstein created. It is important to understand the significance of mathematics. Generic formulas like that of exponential growth can be used to calculate a plethora of processes from technology manufacturing to nuclear fission. More complicated mathematical formulas will apply to more specific processes, but never entirely exclusive to any one process. Gravity Probe B uses a gyroscope to measure the geodetic effect and frame dragging caused from allegedly the Earth warping space-time. However, the formulas used are incapable of determining if the effect is caused by a medium such as space-time or a medium such as a field. And other experiments, such as the ones testing time dilation, must be completely recognized as what they are. Equations used in prediction time dilation have no time dilation formula components or a time dilation proportionality constant. They are simply showing an effect that has a strength determined by distance from a source of gravity, or how fast an object travels through a gravitational field. 
The timekeeping devices used are atomic clocks that work off electron transition. Electrons emit electromagnetic radiation as they decay to lower energy state overload paths within the electromagnetic field of the proton. But is electron transition immune to the effects of large external electromagnetic force field? How would the electron's ability to release energy vary as it travels through the field, or as the field itself becomes stronger? Dynamic gravity is a theory that has never been seen as a reason to explain gravity, because no one has ever thought of gravity in this way before. And even though the theory of dynamic gravity can explain just about all the mysteries of gravity other theories fail at, dynamic gravity still is little more than a conceptual theory crafting with little evidence to support it. Time will ultimately reveal which of the many theories of gravity is closest to the truth.